If you clicked on today's video, you might be confused on how you're going to make your NBA 2K23 build. Because unlike previous 2Ks, we do not have a demo or much information at all about the NBA 2K23 builder system and launch day is right around the corner. So in this video, I'm going to be going over everything I know about the NBA 2K23 builder, what you're going to need and want for your new NBA 2K23 build, and mistakes you do not want to make on your new NBA 2K23 build. Now, trust me, there is tons of information in this video. So I suggest you to try not to skip at all in this video and listen throughout the entire video because there is tons of valuable information that I have to give you from YouTubers, creators, and devs that have already tested and played the game. So like I said, do not skip. Otherwise, you are risking you going into the builder for the first time on day one of NBA 2K23 build and most likely putting all your VC into a build that you're not going to like within the first couple days and then you're going to have a bunch of VC wasted on a trash build. And the first thing to know before we even get into this video is everybody that has already played the game is saying this is the hardest, most complicated build system of all time. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if this video was helpful at all and smash that like button for this video because this took a lot of research and a lot of notes taken, a lot of a lot of organizing for this video to come about, okay? But anyways, let's get straight into it. What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Henry, aka Double H, and I am back at it with yet another video. And today is technically our first NBA 2K23 video. Now, I'm going to make this video as fast as possible with loads of information flying at you throughout this entire video so like i said i advise you not to skip if you want you're gonna miss a lot of valuable information now just a couple things i would like to explain before we jump right into it why you should listen to me well i've been playing 2k since 2k11 i have tons of experience in my career and making builds i have played in some of the biggest wagers using some of the best builds i've had thousands of games played especially on some of the very recent 2ks i always have a 90 plus win percent in these 2ks with almost 10,000 games played in every single one of them and every single time a new 2k comes out day one one, I always make the best ISO build, which is a build I like to make. And I also make a good a builds for other positions that I don't even play mainly. And also, I have a lot of inside information about uh, this NBA 2K23 builder. So yeah, fasten those seat belts, grab that popcorn. This is about to get crazy. Anyways, let's dive into the information immediately. All right, now, by the way, this video is for both current gen and next gen players. So it doesn't matter what console you're on, what gen you're playing, this is the video for you. So we're going to be going over some of the information we already know about the builders i'm going to be telling you guys about some of the tips i have for you for making your first build and then we're going to go over everything the devs and some of the other content creators that have already played the game and what they said about the builder and information inside information they have about it basically so the first thing we know is that the next gen and current gen builders are going to be very similar for current gen players pie charts are gone so anything you know about pie charts anything you're used about the builder system throw that out the window because pie charts are never going to return and they're not going to be NBA, NBA 2K23. The build system is going to be a lot like the one on your screen. This is the NBA 2K21 next gen builder. So for players that don't know what this builder is like, it's pretty simple, right? You pick your position, you pick your handness, you pick your jersey number, just like any other builder. You go through your height, weight, wingspan, body shape that affects all your stats, caps, and all that stuff. And then you can really go into the builder and customly upgrade whatever you want. There's no choosing a pie chart and certain stats on a, either finishing, shooting, playmaking, defense, rebound physicals all affect what badges you get and what level they're on based on bronze through hall of fame if you want to know more about this build system because if you do have no idea anything about it i would highly recommend go watching some 2k21 or 2k22 next gen build videos anyways another thing this means for current gen and next gen players this is all ready for next gen players but you won't need to make any more quote unquote rep builds because getting rep in both gens now because this is the build system will no longer have to mean that you have to throw lobs or play a certain way or play on a certain build like a play shot or interior finisher how rep is going to work now on both gens is teammate grade so you can literally make whatever build you can want you can play however you want basically you're going to get an a a good grade as long as you guys win the game and 
pass the ball around. So don't even worry about making any kind of rep build because it doesn't matter what build you make. You can still get the max rep in every single part game with a lockdown, a center, a guard, or it doesn't matter what you do. Now the builders are a little bit different. I try to ask Mike Wang, who, who does work for 2K and he does work on this game and he knows basically the ins and outs of it. I try to ask him what the difference are between the current gen and next gen builder and he didn't respond, but he did say that the current gen builder is going to be based off the 2K22 next gen builder. I don't know if that's going to be, that means it's going to be exactly that, but it's going to be based off that. And then the 2K23 next gen builder is going to be something that's based off of that as well, but it's like an upgraded version. Like they fixed a lot of things. They made it a lot more balanced and all that stuff. Now I'm going to pop up on the screen something else. This is going to be all the new badges in NBA 2K23 and what they do and their meanings and all that. This is going to be very important when you're making your build because you're going to want to know what badges you're unlocking and what they exactly do. So pause this, take a screenshot, whatever you need to do with it. This is all the new badges for NBA 2K23. Now I'm going to give you guys some tips that are usually the same kind of tips and usually the same kind of guidelines you should follow on a build to 2K year basis. So something to note is that if you were a next gen player in 2K22, glitch builds have been patched. So that glitch where you could go in, switch your build type and then go back in and get higher speed on higher, taller builds, that glitch is gone. It's patched. It's confirmed. The testers that have played the game have confirmed that the glitched builds are gone. So there's no point of even trying that or testing that. And so far, all the testers and everybody that has played the game, looked at the build system, tested the build system, have all said that this build system is not only the hardest build system of all time, but it's going to take you, some people say, up to 10 hours to make your build. That is crazy. I'm going to be helping y'all out with build videos once I get my hands on it to make that process a lot faster. But God damn. And they're also saying it is the most complicated build system of all time. So make sure y'all turn on notifications because we're going to have some build videos to help y'all out with all that and make that process a lot smoother, faster, and easier. But something I would like to know is before you even make a build, I would just make some, when you first get on the game, I would just make some random 60 overall build and then look at all the animations. You know when you could, you know, look at the animations and then it shows you that it's locked and what you need for certain animations. So if you want dunks, go look at what ratings you need for those dunks, how, what vertical you need for those dunks. If you want good dribble moves, go look at what dribble moves or what rating you need for the dribble moves that that you want or for example jump shots is going to be different this year we're going to talk about that later go look at what rating you need for the jump shot you want we're going to talk about that in a second though now another thing to note usually there are a lot of just safe builds that you can make now i don't know if it's going to be like that this year with how people are saying it's the build system so complicated and a lot more balanced but usually there's a lot of safe builds from to make and what i mean by this is builds that were op in the past or safe in the past might be safe options to at least start 2k23 so for example in 2k21 i had a three-point playmaker if you guys remember that in 2k22 i also made a three-point playmaker and it was very good it was exactly the same play shot pie chart with lock take and a next gen example is the six seven demigod build i made in 2k21 next gen I made that basically exact build in 2K22 next gen, and I used that in the entire year on next gen. It was a very good build. Now, obviously, the build system is a a very different for some of you guys that didn't play next gen because it's just literally just custom attributes. But a safe guard build, I would say, is just anything with shooting and playmaking upgraded. So just make sure you upgrade upgrade those two things, and you're gonna be valuable on the court. Because one thing to note is shooting is always valuable in the park. Everybody needs some kind of shooter, whether it's the twos, the threes, whatever. Safest lock builds, obviously, upgrade your defense shooting safest center builds if you want to make some kind of inside center i heard six eights are going to be too short this year we're going to talk about that later um but yeah any kind of inside center just make sure you got good defense make sure you got good physicals uh outside centers just make sure you can shoot the ball you got your shooting upgrading your defense upgrading and you're not going to get babied in the paint but we're going to talk about the statistical stuff with those safe builds and good builds later on because there's a lot of information you guys are going to need to know about that because things are going to be very different in 2k23 especially with this build now usually Usually any build over seven foot is pretty risky unless you're a post score or a 5v5 record pro end player. So I would suggest not going seven foot or over. That's usually too slow um, for park twos and threes to hedge or get back on defense or just, you know, get back to, for a rebound or whatever the case might be. Another thing that's going to be very important for the 2K23 builder is stamina. We already saw that clip of Lonzo Ball and Jason Tatum dribbling, running out of energy fast. But not only that, there's going to be that stamina bar on defense defense this year too so you only have three what right trigger boost on defense as well so stamina is going to be huge for both offense and defense so i would suggest maxing that stamina 
on every build you make this year. I'm not going to lie, especially to start 2K23. Now we're going to go over a couple more things about the 2K23 builder and stuff that surrounds it. And then we're going to go into what the developers had to say about the game and what all these YouTubers and creators that have already played the builder and information that they sent out. Key information, secret information that we're, that I'm going to tell you guys about that we need to know before we get on NBA 2K23's builder. Now here is a list of all these jump shot stats that you need to unlock for jump shots. Now this year, jump shots were completely different there's no number jump shots and these jump shots you need a certain mid-range or three-pointer to even get so let's say your custom jump shot was like stephen curry rudy gay and then dante exum okay well if you don't have a certain rating to get stephen curry you can't even use that in your custom jump shot or if you don't have a certain rating for dante exum you can't even use that for your custom jump shot we're going to talk about that more later in this video but just know this list mike wang who's i'm going to use his name a lot in this video he's just the 2k developer he's the guy that works on the game so he's literally creating the game he said that this list is outdated so don't go off that but anyways we're just talk about that later in this video putting going with a low three-pointer might be risky in this 2k everybody that's working on the game and everybody that has tested the game is saying that shooting with a low three-pointer is gonna be a lot harder and that shooting in 2k23 is gonna take way more skill and a lot harder than 2k22 now i know they usually say that every year but they're really trying to key that in on the, us this year so i would say a risky build a two-way playmaker if you go with a 68 three-pointer that might be risky with the new jump shot system and how they're they're saying shooting's hard but we'll see what happens before i even go any further when i say things that have been said a lot or what people are saying i'm not just saying anyone i'm literally talking about people that have tested the game or played the game or creators that have tested or played the game or people that have literally created the game what are they saying about the game so these are all valuable voices that are saying these things that i'm telling you guys something that they're keying in on is strength will be very important i know they say this every year but there was one creator uncle demi who has tested the game and played the game that went as far to say that 2k23 strength will be more important than speed because rather than going left right or around players you're gonna want to travel more north south and run through players and we're gonna be talking about more about that later in this video and how that is going to happen so yeah if you make a guard with no strength a center with no strength it's gonna be a problem for you on defense and offense now with takeovers this year takeovers are completely redesigned especially for current gen now for current gen it's going to be double takeover and the double takeover is just going to be just like it was in 2k19 so i'm going to have i can choose two takeovers we don't know if you're going to be able to change these takeovers later on and but you're probably going to have to make your build a certain way to unlock these takeovers so if you make a pure slasher you're not going to be able to even choose sharp takeover but anyways let's say you sh choose sharp and lock you're going to have both of those takeovers. Now, it's probably going to be a, a little different. They haven't really specified on how it's going to work in game, but it's probably going to be, oh, um, I shot through. I made three threes in a row. Now I have sharp take. I can either keep scoring and keep working towards that second takeover so I can activate and have both at the same time, or I could activate right now and just have the one takeover. That's probably how it's going to work. But anyways, for next gen, the double takeover is exactly how it was in 2K22 uh it's still spread out so like sharp takeover is going to be limitless and spot up precision and so on so on current gen's different because sharp takeover is a sharp takeover has all those assets in it instead of next gen where it's more like cut up into different pieces now one more thing i would like to say before we go into the information that the 2k devs have told us and what some creators have been saying that literally played the game just the other day um builds that i think are going to be good are iso builds that are very good at slashing i think that is going to be very overpowered um i also think taller centers are going to be nice as well like 6 10 6 11 not no not, that 6 8 shit's not going to work i'm going to tell you more about that later i also i also think small guards uh like play shots you guys are not going to be able to make your builds like you did in 2k22 we're going to talk about that later as well but uh the build i'm going for if you guys want the build i'm going for an nba 2k23 exactly what stats i want i'm looking for um before nba 2k23 even comes out make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and i will drop that video as soon as possible you guys because i already got a bunch of notes written down of what i'm looking for so all my iso players all everybody that likes the builds that i make y'all know what i'm talking about Hey, that build video might, you know what I'm saying? It can come out before 2K23 if y'all drop a like on this video, okay? First, before I go over what Mike Wang has told us, I'm, that, that information is going to be the speed of light. I'm going to talk about like 100 different things in like two minutes. Anyways, we're going to go over what Uncle Demi has said about NBA 2K23 and a couple other creators that, what if they've said about NBA 2K23. Now, all this information I'm about to say very fast and quickly is stuff he knows about the game because he's played the game. 
He's tested the game. He's been in the builder. He's played the game. So there's not a lot of people that have done that so far. So all these things he's about to, that I'm about to tell y'all is things that he has said after playing the game and testing the builder. Okay. So this isn't just any information someone's just trying to give you. This ain't just random stuff. This is valuable information you're going to want to hear. Now it's going to be very random. I'm going to be skipping around a lot, but let's get into it. So he said strength is going to be very important this year. You're going to want at least a 60, 70 strength, depending on your, whether you're a guard or a center because you're going to need that strength to unlock the bully badge and the bully badge is going to be very important it's going to allow offensive players to run through defenders and get to the basket like a Giannis onto the Kupu type of build okay I probably said his last name wrong it's chilling we're chilling okay and like I said earlier the bully badge is going to make speed not as important because rather than running left to right you're going to be running more north to south through players instead of around players and left to right on players and this is going to be what he said the hardest mindset for 2k23 is you need to ditch that 2k22 mindset and go into the 2k23 mindset because a lot of things that were good or important in 2k22 it's the exact opposite in 2k23 and he said the hardest thing people are going to have to understand is that strength is very important and speed is not as important as he's he's went as far to say that strength could be more important than speed so i'll know take the information what you want with it he said layup packages are going to be very good this year and if you don't have at least an 80 layup package for long athlete usually i think you need in the 70 you need an 80 this year that your layups are going to be very bad so play shots that don't really upgrade their layup too far in the 80s uh if you go up for a layup that shit's getting swatted you're gonna have horrible layup, an layup animations they're gonna be slow they're gonna be bad they're gonna be blockable all types of stuff he also said they bumped up a lot of unblockable dunk animations to like you have to unlock them at either 80 uh, 80 dunk 84 dunk etc etc when in the past you only need like a 70 65 dunk to unlock some of the um, most unblockable dunks in the game a good example of that is quick drops off one you're gonna need at least an 80 driving dunk to unlock that this year he also said the best finishing badges for nba 2k23 is going to be master and the bully badge he said the bully badge is going to be the new wave and master is going to be very important for centers he also said post fades and finishing at the basket is also very overpowered in 2k23 another thing he said was pass accuracy is going to be very important uh bullet passer is gone so rather than putting up bullet passers to make your passes more accurate faster and better animations based on your pass accuracy accuracy rating will affect how fast your passes are um what kind of animations you're getting whether they're fast or slow and um how accurate those passes are and if you don't he said if you don't have your pass accuracy at at least a 70 you're going to see your player getting these slow animations that are going to be automatic intercepted steals and they're going to be very slow and he said to go as far if you're a point guard and you pass a lot you're going to need an 85 90 pass accuracy potentially he also said lockdowns are going to be very good this year so all my lockdowns out there this might be a very good year for y'all boys another thing that was said is that you're Gonna need an 80 vertical for elite dunk packages also weight can't just be minimum like it usually is weight is going to be a huge factor when making your build because it's going to affect your strength on your build and like i said earlier strength is very important this year so you're not just going to be able to go minimum weight on every single build like you usually do another thing that was talked about a lot is hall of fame clamps you're going to need a 99 perimeter defense and that's how it's going to be for a lot of these um badges and stats if you want some of these good badges on hall of fame you're going to need a 99 in that category making builds very balanced also he said that it does not make sense to have a skinny player this year so if you make like a slight play shot very skinny play shot with no strength it's going you're going to be a huge liability on defense there's going to be a lot of there's going to need to be a lot of help coming your way on defense and you're basically going to be a guaranteed bucket every single time when you're playing defense another thing he said was you're, there won't be as many badges this year when it comes to builds so you're not going to have those badge counts you had in 2k22 it's not going to be like that in 2k23 especially because because of the new bad system and we're going to talk about that new bad system as well basically how it works is there's like core badges there's tier badges i'll put a screenshot on a screenshot on the uh, screen right quick of how it works but let's say like clamps is the best defensive badge you're not going to be able to unlock that defensive badge until you have a certain amount of tier one tier two and tier three or tier one and tier two badges because you can't even put on a clamps until you unlock a tier three badge because it's the one of the best defensive badges so it's going to be under tier three he also said the game is made completely differently those centers that you saw in the stage on the threes and the twos that were six eight will no longer be good anymore he he said you're gonna need at least be 610 and 611. He said 610 and 611 centers are gonna be the new wave, and 68 are just going to get bullied. Another thing that was said is Grace Under Pressure and Paint Master are very good finishing badges for big men and are gonna be very important. Those two badges are gonna make you look like Shaq under the paint, is exactly what he said. Another thing that was said is interior defense, which was very bad in 2K22, is completely buffed and revamped this year and apparently a lot better. So I don't know, we'll see. I 
I gotta see it for myself, but that's what it was said. Another thing to note is Mismax Expert is now going to be a playmaking badge, and it's not gonna work how before, where you shoot over taller defenders. Instead, it's gonna be more breaking down defenders, and it's gonna be like ankle breaking centers. And he said if that guard gets that switch on the center, which is gonna be what a lot of guards want are going to want to do this year it's basically going to be ankle breakers and the center stands no chance in guarding you just how like Allen iverson if he's being guarded by dikembe mutombo well mutombo should have no chance that's how it should work and this also confirms that ankle breakers are going to be back and they're going to be a lot better than they were in 2k22 thank god another thing is anchor badge which is a blocking badge is going to be very key for blocking so anybody that wants to get snatch blocks to get blocks play good defense the anchor badge is the badge you're looking for he also said for small guards and like play shot type of builds agent zero and hands down man down are going to be very overpowered for you and those are going to be two badges you're going to want to look for when putting on your build i already think i mentioned this earlier but he did say that guard builds with low defense or skinnier guard builds are going to be guaranteed buckets for the offense when they're on defense now for dribblers the key badges he said for small guards that are going to be very nasty and absolutely break down and destroy defenders are ankle breaker killer combos and mismatch expert he said the combination of those three badges are going to be absolutely nasty now that was everything uncle demi who tested the game a couple other people that tested the game what they said about it and after looking at the builder if you guys want to look at uncle demi's channel he's been talking about a couple of this stuff i'll leave a link to it in the description shout out to him but anyways let's also go over what mike wang has said about 2k23 so far now we're going to go ahead and speed run everything mike wang who's a developer of 2k literally created the game what he has said about nba 2k23 so far he confirmed a lot this is going to be very fast i'm going to be spewing out information so to make sure not to skip and if you need to rewind and listen back to what i said feel free to do so i'm going to be popping up screenshots as well on the screen showing proof of what he exactly said so you can pause and read them as well mike wayne confirms that 5v5 prom will also be on hall of fame difficulty acrobat and giant slayer will both still be in the game the new adrenaline boost will both work and be effective and refilled after every single offense and defense possession is changes or is over with here on mike wayne's tweet he kind of talks about how the adrenaline boost is going to work when it resets and all that good stuff mike wayne confirms that adrenaline boost will be on current gen and next gen agent threes is basically going to replace the circus threes badge that was in 2k22 ai defense got a whole new revamp it's supposed to be a lot better this year badges will still be bronze through hall of fame like usual even though that new core core badge system is added driving dunk ratings are going to be a lot more important this year so instead of just unlocking those dunks that are unblockable at a low rating you're going to need a high dunk ratings to make it unblockable instead of those animations affecting it this random timeout glitch has been patched role players and superstar builds will both be in the game and mike wang says that if you have a team of role players you're most likely to win more games Games than a team of a bunch of superstar overpowered builds that can do everything you cannot lose 99 overall this year on either gen current gen and next gen will both have a double takeover and mike wayne explains how they will work the contest system is completely different from 2k20 and 2k21 and mike wayne explains how it works this year right here here's a screenshot of mike wayne explaining how the core badge system works we talked about this earlier if you want to read this and get a better idea of it go ahead and feel free to do so this is him confirming as well the current gen build system is based off the 2k22 next gen builder apparently defense is back this year and is going to be very good and even favored over offensive gameplay this year we'll see about that but that's what mike wayne says about 2k23 when it comes to the adrenaline boost mike wayne says that if you spam steals or, or try to jump a lot or try to spam x or y you're going to lose a lot of adrenaline boost and you're basically going to be a free bucket every time mike wayne talks about how the dribbling system is going to work this year and how the core of dribbling is still intact from last year dunk meter will both will be on current gen this year as well but the only dunk animation that won't be on current gen that's going to be on next gen is that going to be that new feature where you can just hang on the rim as long as you want to here are all some of the dunk requirements and the vertical requirements for the next gen builder Here's Mike Wang explaining how the dunk meter and the shot button is going to work and the differences on the controls. It's also confirmed that fadeaways and pull-up jumpers and step backs are still going to be very useful, especially with a magician badge and space creator. Apparently, we should all be testing the, the new layup meter on and off and see what we like better because on might be better this year, even though we usually turn layup timing off. Dunks like back scratchers, windmills, all those flashy dunks won't be getting blocked like they usually will. The park and stage sliders will be very close to Hall of Fame difficulty. Michael Jordan, Devin Booker, Zach Levine, and Magic Johnson have very good layup packages, and I've also heard from a lot of people that have tested the game that Michael Jordan is going to be a very overpowered layup package this year. Apparently, hop steps and euro steps from 2K20 and 2K19 are going to be more useful in NBA 2K23. Apparently, mashing in the paint and abusing interior defense is going to be fixed this year and is going to be buffed, and there's not going to be exploits under that basket anymore and if there is they're going to patch it immediately that's big apparently there's going to be a new cooldown when biting on a pump fake and it's going to be harder to keep jumping 
and try to contest that person after you jump once. Those custom shots we were talking about earlier where you need a certain rating for your jump shot, those will also affect custom jump shots too as well. If you want to unlock, a, for example, the Stephen Curry jump shot and you need like what, a 93 pointer or 90 mid range, you only need one of those stats. So if you have a 90 mid range and a 25 three pointer, you can still get the Stephen Curry jump shot, for example. By the way, confirms that this list of jump shots is not updated anymore. So do not go off of that. He also talked about why they can't turn off the option for turning off your layup timing. Apparently, locks are going to be very solid this year and very good. Mismatch Expert is now a playmaking badge. These are all the SIG jumpers and attribute requirements for certain jump shot ratings. It's not updated anymore, but this is what the jump shots and uh, how tall you're going to be and certain things are going to matter for this jump shot. And each jump shot has its own ratings as well. So once again, you can't just put in a 68 three-pointer and put on whatever jump shot you want. You can't just be any height you want and just put on any jump shot you want. It's not how it works anymore. Every build is going to have its own unique good jump shot. By the way, I also talked about how post players are going to need to control their player this year. There is going to be no auto steals for lanes and interceptor this year again. There's going to be no numbered jump shots anymore. So set shot 25, jump shot number 22 all that's going to be gone it's only going to be nba player jump shots pass openness is out post fades will no longer be the mid-range rating it will be dependent on how far you're shooting them out from pump faking on offense will not reduce your adrenaline boost but it will reduce the chance of you making the shot you're gonna need an 80 driving dunk and a 60 vertical get like quick drops off one which is one of the most unblockable dunk packages in the game real player percentage is not going to be in nba 2k23 for online games real player percentage is also gone for free throws as well there's a huge improvement for saving the ball out of bounds apparently sharpshooter is going to be useful again unlike 2k21 and 22. Mike Wang said his favorite improvement at 2K23 is the shooting skill gap. Here, Mike Wang talks about what shooting three point rating you're going to need. He said that you're, if you're a casual, not that good, you're going to need at least in the 80s. If you're a sweat, you might be able to get away with the 70s. But once you get your badges maxed out and your field goal percentage up, you might even be able to go lower. So this is making me feel very confident. Here, Mike Wang talks about more about options for pro stick and all that stuff. He also confirms that shot meters being turned off will still give you that green light boost. Apparently, a lot of sick jump shots have been updated, just like Jason Tatum and Tracy McGrady. You're going to need a lot higher ball handling to unlock some animations. For example, Trey Young and Stephen Curry, you're going to need a 92 ball handle. He also confirmed that stretch bigs are going to be back and a 75 three-pointer might be a little low for them. The new take foul rule will also take an effect in 2K23. Team takeover has been completely revamped for NBA 2K23 next gen. Walk on wreck is supposed to be a superstar difficulty. He also talks about how the badges have been completely retuned and some overpowered badges from last year will not be overpowered this year. Apparently whites have been completely patched and you're gonna have to grade a lot of your shots if you want to make a lot of shots. Greens will be delayed this year and you won't be able to tell it whether your opponent or yourself green or white of the shot until the ball hits the rim. Green animations will still be in the game though despite this new feature. And last but not least, Mike Wayne asked the community what they're going to be playing next gen or current gen or both. And this is what people had to say. That's going to be a wrap for today's video. I know I had a bunch of information thrown at you guys in this video. And if you didn't watch all the way through, I recommend you rewinding the parts that you missed because there is a lot of hidden information that you're going to need to know for NBA 2K23. We went over all my tips for NBA 2K23 builds, everything we know as of now when it comes to the NBA 2K23 gameplay and build system, and all the secrets info that the 2k devs and the people that tested and played the game early gave us if you guys want to know what my nba 2k23 build is going to look like and what i'm thinking going into day one of nba 2k23 drop a like on this video and i got you guys with that video next make sure to subscribe to the channel 1 million subscribers on the way and by the way there is a link in the description to set a reminder for my first nba 2k23 stream we about to go crazy this year i love y'all so much Appreciate y'all coming through and watching this video. It's been your boy Henry, aka Double H, and I'm out of here, man. Peace.